and welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Jessica Clemens, and I'm here to break down one of my favorite comic book to TV show adaptations, The Boys, season three, and what season four might have in store with the VP running mate, Victoria Newman, Red River Institute, Black Noir being dead, and Homelander's new single dad lifestyle. While we hosted The Boys Underground after show, breaking it down weekly, here I'm just gonna give you a super quick, more in-depth knowledge of who we may have forgotten about and what new characters and stories could arrive in season four. Yes, season four has already been in the works. They start shooting in late August, according to an interview from Variety with the Boys showrunner Eric Kripke, so season four could be right around the corner. I think this goes without saying, but I'm about to spoil, so just heads up. Season three follows our regular band of misfits still trying to take out Homelander. They team up with Soldier Boy, our Captain America-esque superhero from back in the day who we later find out is Homelander's biological father and just insanely gross. Homelander is an emotional roller coaster from the beginning to end, continuing to be the best villain I've ever seen. He kills the newest seven member Supersonic, innocent bystanders, not so innocent termite, and Black Noir. But with this sort of downward spiral comes civilian support when Homelander decides to finally open up on live TV and his numbers shoot up, baby. Victoria Newman, AKA Lady Head Popper, AKA by who? By me. Started the show as the director of Federal Bureau of Superhuman Affairs, ends the season as Bob Singer's US VP running mate and it is revealed to be Stan Edgar's daughter. Are you seeing a theme here? Ashley is basically standing chief executive while Stan Edgar is dethroned by Homelander and his own daughter. Maeve, while helping Butcher is caught by Homelander and imprisoned and Vought, later to fight Homelander and Soldier Boy, but don't worry, her story ends happily. A-Train has a new heart but ruins his relationship with his brother. The Deep, who you thought couldn't get worse, in fact gets way worse. Mother's Milk starts to dive into his OCD and continues to be the best dad on the show. Yes, so is Huey's dad, but he's in this season for like a minute tops. Kamiko loses her powers and gains them back and learns some sick dance moves along the way with Frenchie. This season was a lot. It was very gruesome, very emotional, but we all knew the theme was fathers. Feels good. Feels Right. It was fathers, fathers, fathers. The biggest reveal this season was in episode seven where we find out Soldier Boy is Homelander's biological dad, which immediately had us all wondering, oh, okay, who is the mom? Our amazing cameraman Dashel during the boys underground pitch Stormfront, which though disgusting, factually sound. Homelander was born sometime in spring 1981 using the semen of Soldier Boy and an unknown egg donor. If Stormfront had knowingly decided to use her own eggs, she definitely picked out Soldier Boy and a list of soups. According to Soldier Boy in episode six and 15, he and Stormfront founded Herogasm. So they met way before 1980 when Vogelbaum asked him for a sample. And there's also the super weird hierarchy too, because Stan Edgar was emailing Stormfront about the successful trials at Sage Grove. So Stormfront still had a lot of sway and free choice in making decisions, which of course she did. She's the wife to Dr. Vought. And if she unknowingly gave her eggs, it could have been in 1939 when Dr. Vought of Vought Internationals was testing Compound V on her, because remember, she's the first successful suit. And with a advanced freezing methods, you can freeze your eggs for a very long time. And before you say, Jessica, but she loves Homelander so much, why wasn't she there for him when he was a baby? B -b 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 -b. In 1979, Stormfront disappeared. No one heard from her again, but I'm sure her goals in creating a Nazi army surpassed that of being a mother. So she might have been there at Sage Grove in hiding for Vought, watching her son grow into a man. Disgusting. Another huge impact of the show is Ryan now in a loving embrace of Homelander, his daddy. This father-son relationship is toxic. There, I said it. But we should remember, there's a ton of resources for Homelander, more so Ryan, within Vought. We're already ramping up for the boy spinoff series, where young soups are tested in a Hunger Games style challenges at the Golduckin. I know I'm pronouncing that name wrong. When you read comic books your entire life and then you have to say them out loud, you realize you're saying every name wrong. That's a made up word. Who was made up? Eh, University School of Crime Fighting, clearly founded by John Godolkin. Godolkin? Godolkin. Godolkin! Who, like an evil Charles Xavier, has his own horrible past in the comics that we'll save for the spinoff breakdown. But we know that Jasmine Sinclair is casted as Marie Moreau, who we briefly see in episode two as one of the several soups at the Red River Institute. There's also Teenage Kicks and the Young Americans, the adolescent super teams we haven't really seen yet. The Teenage Kicks were the troublemakers. The Young Americans were the old fashioned nicest pie types. If it sounds familiar, it's because the Young Americans gave us Supersonic and Starlight in the comics. In the show, it was the Capes for Christ circuit, if you remember. There's a ton of teens in the comics, including the Midwest Guardians, even Tech Knight going on to say, G Nomads, G Brits, G Wiz, every single last one of them. Either way, we see Ryan getting stronger every day. He's gonna need guidance soon. More guidance than whatever Homelander can give. His superpowers mimic that of Homelander's, and Ryan is super bright. Maybe Homelander tries to put him in the spinoff. Clearly, we'll be introduced to more child and teen soups under Vought in season four because of Varsity, and Varsity has some characters 
characters and themes from season three that will go into season four. But more importantly, a child team with Ryan as the appointed leader seems like something we're headed towards. Or maybe just a super evil Ryan. A super evil Ryan team. Either way, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna need people. Ugh my baby black noir spent his last minutes of season three building his courage to face soldier boy just to get his organs rearranged by homelander and not like that now he's dead or is he black noir can survive almost anything including even having his head ripped open brains three feet from his body but a punch through the stomach kills him i ain't buying it eric kripke said in an interview black noir is dead his organs are out all over the place but when you have a completely silent completely masked clad hero they're reasonably easy to recast yeah, okay, um, actually, in the comics, we know Lamplighter, along with Blarney, Cock, and Nubia, all came back after death, resurrected by Vought. In no way is it glamorous, but I suspect when trying to speed up his regenerative powers, or maybe just fix him quicker than normal, we're gonna turn my boy into a super zombie. So is he really alive if he's a zombie? Of course not, Kripke, but I will probably cry if you do this to my boy. And let's not forget about little Nina, the mob boss drug dealer. She is still free after torturing Kamiko, Shari, and Frenchie in episode six. In the series, Frenchie she used to do jobs for Nina back in the day, and when Frenchie's ex, Cherie, crossed her and lost her supply, Nina wanted her dead. They settled on the location of Soldier Boy for killing this Russian oligarch who got in her bad books. The guy that got dildoed in the neck. In the comics, Va used Nina to recruit a bunch of people, turn them into soups with this bogus compound V, and stage a coup. In actuality, they'd try and she would stop them dead, looking like the Angel of Moscow. Vought gave her a remote that would detonate and explode all their heads, but of course, it was the bum remote Vought was setting her up. The storyline is so fun, and Victoria Newman is so power-hungry, could strike a deal with little Nina. She already did with Homelander, she took out her dad, next Bob Singer, from President of the United States to Russian ally, I mean, come on, it's written in the stars. We don't know if Victoria Newman will kill the president, but we do know in the comics, Victor Newman, aka Vic the Veep, did kill the president and was later killed by Homelander. So our storyline is already following the comic book one. Lastly, we can hopefully see Cindy, the telekinetic suit from season two at the Sage Grove Center in season four. Showrunner Eric Kripke said, Cindy is out there. He then mentions reaching out to the actress in her busy schedule, so they're figuring it out. He closes with, Cindy will return. There's no way Cindy doesn't return. Cindy is too cool not to return. Anyone who exits the show to the Golden Girls intro is damn cool in my book. Kripke, so please bring her back. We need to remember that she can crush people with her telekinetic powers, make them pop, literally kind of like what Victoria Newman can do with people's heads. So her and Victoria Newman in a battle would be epic. All right, that's just some of the things I've spotted and theorized. Let me know yours in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram at Twitter at Lulu Clemens. Follow new rock stars, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Make sure to jump back to the boys underground where myself, Marina, and fellow new rock starers chat. The boys and later gators have a nice night. Let's go crazy.